You're watching KTK in high definition. This is KTK News at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us for KTK News at 6. I'm Kara Pritchard, Neil Barton and Casey Koviak have the night off. Well, it was another cold late December day in East Texas. Lots of clouds, little to no sunshine. Marcus says that it will be very limited the next few days. Marcus, you say that some showers are possible by New Year's Eve night, but nothing like the weekend, right? Yeah, that's exactly right, Kara. Nothing expected like what we had this past weekend over East Texas, but as we go through New Year's Eve night through about the second day of January by Saturday, could see just a few light showers moving through. More on that with the extended forecast a little bit later on in the show. It was another cold day today. Today, temperatures only making it up to the lower 40s for this afternoon. That's because we've been locked in with the cloud cover, and that still remains this evening here over East Texas. Those low clouds are not going anywhere. We're going to see them once again for tomorrow. So, unfortunately, we are going to continue to see some gray days here over East Texas. Temperatures right now still holding steady, mostly into the lower 40s still right now, where we had our high temperatures. And on the broader view, we still have those low clouds that are over us. There's a weak disturbance out to the west that's generating some snow showers in Amarillo and Lubbock that could help generate a few light showers in deep East Texas as we go overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. Those are going to be very light in coverage and in nature. 38 the overnight low for tonight under a mainly cloudy sky on your Wednesday. Plenty of clouds, limited sunshine. Temperatures will try to reach the lower 50s, but it might be hard to do if those clouds don't break apart. More coming up in a couple of minutes. Kara. Thanks, Marcus. After violent massacres took place in California, Paris, and even a church in South Carolina, some local churches feel they should plan for the worst. KTK's Caroline Hamilton is live in the Longview newsroom to tell us what one church is planning to do. Caroline. That's right, Kara. One Longview church is forming a security plan for its worship services in the new year. Churches from around the nation are debating on how to prepare for the worst in unexpected situations. One of those churches being the local Longview Baptist Temple. They plan to take on a new security objective for 2016. Although they've always had security, the church plans to have a more concentrated team of security members called resource officers. These officers will pre-check the buildings before services and they will be in charge of safety plans if something happens. We have to be prepared for the evil that might um, come into a place of worship. And as we have seen, um, churches are a target. And whether we like it or not, uh, they are. And people want to know they're secure when they come to church. The church plans to have trained security officers at services on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and any events or conferences. And the officers will be thoroughly trained on what to do in crisis future crises. Reporting live in the Longview Newsroom, Caroline Hamilton, KTK News. Thanks, Caroline. A new study suggests ultrasound screenings are comparable to mammograms for detecting breast cancers. More than 2,000 patients underwent three annual screenings using ultrasound and mammograms, followed by a biopsy or additional exam. Both methods were equally effective. However, ultrasound screenings had a larger percentage of false positives. A doctor at UT Health Northeast spoke with KTK News about ultrasounds producing those false positives. So with ultrasound, there are, there are benign things in the breast, like benign tumors called fibroadenomas or cysts or any number of things you could see. And then sometimes when we can't explain what we're seeing, we have to biopsy them. It doesn't, we don't know for sure that it's malignant, but we also don't know for sure that it's benign. If you want to read more about the study, visit our website, myeasttext.com. Too often after a storm, scammers will try to take advantage of homeowners by offering quick repairs at a cheap price, only to run off with the money. Helping you to spot those people are the Better Business Bureau and honest local contractors. KTK's Nikki Diaz is live with some advice on how to make sure you're hiring the right man for the job. Nikki. Yeah, Kara, if you've ever had your home damaged by severe weather like a tornado, you want the repair work done as soon as possible. But when your emotions are running high, that's when scammers tend to come in and take advantage of you. We've got some tips on how you can avoid becoming their next victim. They're referred to as storm chasers. They offer a cheap price and ask you to pay up front with cash only to disappear with the money. And they're actually watching for bad weather. And then when it happens, when disaster strikes, they come to the area and they take advantage of those people who have been affected by the storms. Mrs. Mills says there are ways to spot a scammer, something that may give it away, their area code. If a business has an out of uh, the area codes not in our area, 
then if something goes wrong, they're not likely, they're less likely to come back and fix that problem. So you're better off choosing somebody who's local. Cook and Sons Roofing has been in East Texas for 50 years, and Mr. Cook says homeowners should be wary of using cash as a payment method. You never want to do that. You never want to give anybody money up front, and you want a signed contract. Uh, in 50 years of uh, being in the roofing business in Tyler, we've never asked for money up front. He says during a difficult time, we tend to rush. So to avoid being taken advantage of, it's best to slow down and do your research. Don't get in a hurry. Uh, I, I know in some cases that uh, the roof needs to be, or the, the property needs to be secure from the weather as soon as possible. That's usually when people start getting in trouble. They just need to slow down and uh, check the company out before they, before they do business with them. And then, by all means, again, get a, get a signed contract with that company. Now, Mr. Cook says you can always check with the BBB for a legitimate company and even ask your insurance agent if they've worked with a company or not before. Reporting live, Nikki Diaz, KETK News. Thanks, Nikki. After being on the run for several weeks, Mexican authorities have apprehended the affluenza teen. Ethan Couch and his mother were picked up near a resort town. Both are now awaiting extradition to the U.S. Couch went missing earlier this month, and officers issued a warrant for his arrest after a video surfaced on social media of him playing beer pong at a party, a violation of his probation. At that time, violating probation meant up to 10 years in prison. Shortly after Couch vanished, his mother was placed on a missing persons list as well, believing she might be helping her son. The district attorney involved in the case spoke after learning that the teen and his mother were caught and arrested. Take a listen at what she had to say about what will happen next. When he is returned along with his mother, we expect the mother to be charged with hindering apprehension in Texas law, and then we expect to begin proceedings with Ethan Couch. As you know, there's already a hearing set on January the 19th to transfer his juvenile probation to the adult system. She added that his max juvenile sentence would be four months of confinement. In her opinion, that is not a sufficient punishment for the taking of four lives. This Thursday is New Year's Eve and safety is a big concern for police during this time of year due to drunk driving along with many other problems. KTK's Drew Brown has our story. New Year's Eve is this week and many will be out celebrating, but law enforcement will also be out watching for drunk drivers. If they detect that someone's been driving that is under the influence and they get stopped and pulled over and there's enough probable cause to arrest them, then they're going to ask that, that driver to take an intoxilizer. If a driver says no, a search warrant will be issued to have the driver's blood drawn for a test. This is something that we do so we have a, a better case in court. And, and again, we encourage everyone to drink responsibly so therefore they don't have to go through this and get out there and cause an accident. The safety of party patrons is important to businesses throwing New Year's Eve parties, including the Holiday Inn Tyler on South Broadway. It's very important. Um, it goes, it's more important than planning the party. Uh, the main thing we want to do is make sure people are safe. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't do it. They're even offering a package for guests to purchase for staying at the hotel after attending the celebration. It's top priority is something that we will all be looking for. Um, all of us be watching and our bartenders as well know when to not serve people or over serve. On New Year's Eve, gunfire and fireworks are also a big concern for police. Strictly against the law, you cannot discharge a firearm in the city limits. Um, again, those bullets, when they go up in the air, they got to come down somewhere. They can be arrested for it, so uh, please don't do it. When going out for New Year's, it's important to plan ahead and know the law. Drew Brown, KTK News. Since Neil Barton is off, there will be no point of view tonight, but once Neil returns, so will his POV. Still to come, we'll take a look at how the state is battling homelessness and how the numbers are in decline. And later in sports, we had a ton of hoops action in Tyler today. Garrett will have the highlights. You're watching KTK News at 6.